pessimistic about the Las Vegas housing market September 2020. In this video, we will discuss the Las Vegas housing market for August 2020, and then we'll share with you some eye-popping numbers about how much trouble the Las Vegas economy is really in. You will not find this information in a regular housing market report. We have been warning about the Las Vegas real estate market since April 2020, while home sales are back to or surpassing 2019 numbers. Additionally, home prices set a new record in July and August. You might think we must be crazy. That is fair, but we are not delusional, and we'll get to the reasons right after discussing what happened to the Las Vegas real estate market for August. Only two factors control future house pricing in Las Vegas supply and demand, or home sale numbers, and the act of listing inventory. While demand has never been in doubt, we believe that the number of listings will go up significantly in the next few months, arresting the price gains and possibly leading to price cuts. Now let's discuss August market statistics. July 2020 home sales have surpassed the previous year's numbers, and August is not far behind last year. At the end of August, we had 4,639 active home listings that were not under contract, and this number is 40% less than the same time last year, and the main reason for escalating prices in challenging economic conditions. To make the point, here is a map of the Las Vegas Metro. If a buyer is looking for a 2,200 to 2,500 square foot single family home, which is common in a large area bordered by Highway 215 and Summerlin Parkway, Mountains, and I-95, they could only find 47 units regardless of price, lot size, number of bedrooms, and the pool. If the buyers are looking for a one-story house, only 12 will qualify. The median price of Las Vegas homes has been escalating by $5,000 per month since June and set another record at $335,000, which is 9.8% more than January 2020. But the median price only shows the market direction in lower price ranges. The real measure of whether or not home prices have gone up or down is the price per square foot of all homes sold. In August, the price per square foot of single-family houses stands at $183 per square foot for about a 4% price appreciation since June 2020 and 6.4% since January. So a $200,000 home in January is selling for about $213,000 by September. 9.8% median price gain since January is meaningless. This chart shows the months of inventory which is calculated by, by dividing the number of active listings by sales numbers. The months of listing inventory for Las Vegas homes dipped to less than 2.2 months starting February 2020, save April and May due to the lockdown. The months of listing inventory for August is at 1.6 months, which should lead to mid-double-digit real home price gains in a year, but in a normal market. In our previous video, Irrational Exuberance about Las Vegas Housing Market, we explained that the months of listing inventory live in isolation and is only affected by the active listings and sales numbers. However, the number of active home listings and sales numbers are susceptible to economic conditions. In bad economic conditions, the number of for sale listings would go up appreciably, stopping price gains and in some cases leading to price cuts. Now let's discuss why we are pessimistic about the Las Vegas housing market, despite the great sales numbers and record prices. Massard insists on saying this one line. How is this possible? You'll find out why in the next section. We have been following the news about the Las Vegas economy, but a presentation by Mr. Jeremy Aguero, one of the most prominent econ economists here, Put it all together neatly in an hour and 15 minute presentation. You will not see these statistics in a Las Vegas real estate market video. 
We will play about five minutes of it here, which is which will allow us to start, start to say we are going to put the United States economy on pause for a moment, and we're going to get past the COVID-19 crisis, and then the economy is going to be ready to go back up. And it's not a bad idea. It's exactly what we should have been doing as a country. The problem is it may not be enough to get us all the way over to this COVID-19 crisis, particularly if a second wave starts to pop up as schools and universities and things like that start to open. And, and, it, and it matters to us because how are households using these stimulus payments today, right? This just shows, this just shows the, the percentage. Three out of every four households are using that stimulus money to pay household expenses. Right? There's some that are saving it. There's some that are paying off debt. But the vast majority of you are using it for food and utilities and household supplies. So imagine what happens if that doesn't exist. And our state, the state of Nevada, has received almost $19 billion in stimulus funding. $19 billion overall in stimulus funding. And that is a huge amount of money to pour in to our economy uh, overall. And how does Nevada households use that money? Almost 77% of them are reporting using it for food and utilities and household supplies. So while those of us that maybe had some savings and didn't, maybe even didn't get a stimulus payment or maybe used it for some other purpose, those folks down there at the bottom that are saying they're using it for recreation, marginally irresponsible, by the way, but using it for recreation, this is what we have to understand. Is there, we are a state of more than 3 million people. We're a community of 2.7 million people, and there are a lot of people that are paying check the paycheck depending on unemployment insurance or stimulus payments uh, overall, right? Funds used by Nevada households in the past seven days to meet spending needs. Regular income, number one. Thank goodness it's on the top. But look at this. Stimulus payments are 21%. Just to meet spending needs has been used by one out of every four households either unemployment insurance or stimulus payments to make those plays. And if we look at unemployment compensation as a percentage of wage and salaries, just to show you how important that unemployment insurance is to us, it is higher than any point in United States history. And we are burning through our unemployment and trust fund at the fastest rate we ever have in the state of Nevada. And why it all matters. Here's a few things that I think this group might find particularly interesting. Here's those that made their rental payment, that's 82%, but 18% of households indicated they did not make their rental payment. And when asked about the next rental payment, 41% of households in the state of Nevada indicated they have little or no confidence about their ability to make that rental payment next month. And among those, those minority groups, some of those that are at most at risk, Overall, households with children are at the highest level of these uh, overall. Now, again, why it matters further. What about those that indicated they didn't make their mortgage payment last month? 22% of homeowners indicating they didn't make it. Now, I know you all are monitoring uh, what's being sold and what's being listed, and, 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 and we've seen what I think is unexpected stability in the market. And I think it's for a number of different reasons. I think Tom's made some comments publicly that have been absolutely on point relative to all of this. But the underbelly, what we're seeing, remember there was a time when we're thinking, huh, how can we be building all of these housing units? How are people taking out all of this home equity and taking vacations and buying these, these, these boats and doing all these kind of things? How is this possible, right? I think we're looking at it now, and there's many of us that are thinking, how is this possible? Right? And I think we need to make sure that, look, if the, if the virus sort of recovers and we get through that and we get past it, then I think it's going to be largely a non-issue. But if it extends for a longer period of time, it's something that has to, we have to be concerned about. Nevada's reporting food ins insufficiency sometimes or often in the past seven days 300,000 people, almost twice as much as before the pandemic. And this is the one that scares me more than anything else. Those reporting that they delayed getting some form of medical care over the past four weeks as a result of either fear or they were asked to stay at home is, is almost 38% of our population. Look, I know we delayed things like, like elective surgery, but elective surgery becomes emergent surgery when it isn't there. And all of a sudden we're seeing a large reduction in heart attacks and strokes. Yet, yeah, no we're not. People just aren't going to get help for it, right? This is a big concern for our community overall. 
that Nevada Paycheck Protection Program, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here other than to say it is keeping our small businesses afloat today in the state of Nevada. If we look at the summary of the loans that existed and the number of jobs that were covered in Nevada alone as a result of that program, there are massive numbers of those. And when we ask rent or mortgage relief owners or businesses, again, that same survey I talked to you about, are you paying your full rent? 17.1% of businesses in the state of Nevada said, I am not making my rent payment today. There, this is hugely uh, problematic for those with a mortgage. One out of every 10 saying, I am not making my mortgage payment today. Obviously, this is not sustainable because that stimulus that is buoying our state's economy is going to run out. And if it runs out before we get to the other side of the coronavirus crisis, we are going to have a big problem in the state of Nevada. These are genuinely alarming numbers. Let's translate the problem that renters are in for, from percentages. According to a recent report by the Glenn Center, a local nonprofit bipartisan research and policy analysis group, some 118,000 to 142,000 Nevada households are at the risk of eviction this fall. That's the equivalent of 272,000 to 327,000 people. The stimulus ran out in the third week of July, and so far the only stimulus that has been passed is three to six weeks of $300 per week unemployment stimulus, which no one has seen yet. Things are so bad that the president and Nevada governor have extended the moratorium on evictions to avoid a mass eviction situa situation. But eviction in Las Vegas is judicial, and a judge has to sign the eviction order. There are not enough judges to process thousands of potential eviction orders promptly. We do not care about multi-billion dollar companies that own thousands of homes in the Las Vegas metro, but many of these rental units are owned by small investors like many of our investor clients. They use the rental income to pay their mortgage and help fi family finances. The eviction moratorium has hurt our investors badly since they are responsible for all of the property expenses since they have lost a significant percentage of their revenue since April. Some of these investors will list their units, thus growing the number of active listings. Additionally, we have started to see retail vacancies in some highly sought locations in the metro. Other businesses are hanging on for their life and will be out of business in the following months. Many of these business owners are homeowners and have to find a job in unfavorable economic conditions and pay the mortgage again when the mortgage forbearance runs out. Many will list their home. The future of the Las Vegas housing market. The argument over the future of the Las Vegas housing market revolves around how much the active listings will increase in the following months. We believe there will be a significant spike in the number of listings as we, we get closer to the end of the foreclosure moratorium, reversing the price hikes and leading to price cuts. Lastly, just yesterday, we learned that the Problem Solvers Caucus in Congress is publicizing their plan for additional stimulus, affecting what will happen in the coming months. We wish all the best, but think that much damage is already done. CoreLogic, which is the tech company that provides our Las Vegas MLS, has predicted that home prices in Las Vegas will come down by about 7.3% in the next 12 months, and we concur. If you are in the market to buy a home or condo, wait for better pricing. If you plan to sell your home or condo, this is probably going to be the best time in the next couple of years. Call us at 702-478-478. 7800 to start the process. Now you know why we are pessimistic about the future of the Las Vegas housing market despite the recent record prices. If you liked this video, please like and share. You can subscribe to receive future videos on our YouTube channel, Las Vegas for Us. This is Karen Sabrazade with the Sabre team wishing you a great day.